Enter the Bath Mayo Experience. Bath Mayo Experience. Bath Mayo Experience. Bath Mayo Experience. Experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings. Smash the like, sub to Mayo Media Network for all your fantasy football needs. And uh, subscribe to the audio podcast as well, in case that's the preferred method of consumption that you enjoy for your podcast and fantasy football shows. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever the Pat Mayo Experience. Today, talking about the top 150 rankings overall for the fantasy football season half point ppr is what we were discussing i've already done the breakdown and tiers of the running backs and the wide receivers you can find those up on the network and on the podcast feed right now you can also find the links to all of the rankings down in the description so what i've done today is combine my running back and wide receiver rankings into an overall list i have the quarterbacks and the tight ends on a separate page, and I'm going to get Jake Seeley from TheAthletic.com to help me fill in the blanks, discuss the rankings, and break it all down. Like I mentioned, you can just follow along, if you will, with what we've actually come to the conclusion for down in the description, where you can click on the top 150 rankings. You can see what they are in front of you. Or if you just want to make your own rankings, I suggest you go to RunTheSims.com, create a free account, use the season-long projections, and boom, you can make your own rankings completely free. Highly suggest you go give that a whirl because it's a lot of fun. Just play around with the numbers too to see if you can get some of the guys that you like higher up in the rankings and what it would actually take them to do to get there. You want the season-long DFS embedding package and all of those tools, no content, just tools to help you out. Uh, Use code Mayo at runthesims.com for 10% off. Jake, did you go to the Fantasy Football Expo on the weekend? No, uh, because the weekend before was the uh, Flex, Flex League. Leagues yeah. in New York. So, How was that? Good yeah, your to... boy Meanie was down for that. It was great. Uh, yeah, shout out the Meanie. They put the Jake last year, myself, got proposed or got proposed, got engaged, proposed in New York. And then Meanie did the same thing. Congratulations to Meanie. Yes, I haven't seen him since he's been back since New York. So uh, we'll have him on. Big congratulations from me, my family, and the entire Pat Mayo Experience community to our guy, Chris Meanie, on uh, you know, getting engaged after like 15 years. So yeah. Nice work, Meanie. Did it in the right <laughs> I spot. Like, I was like, hey, what's going to change for you, Meanie? It's just like, it's official? Yeah. Uh, I, I think even if they split up now, they'd still be like common law married. So it probably won't change all that much, but the ceremony will be very nice. Uh, so shout out to Chris Meany. So here are the rankings right now, as I have them, the combined wide receiver and running back rankings. I go Jefferson McCaffrey, Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill, Eckler Pollard Chubb, Devonte, Saquon, Derrick Henry, Stephen Diggs, C.D. Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, then Bijan Robinson, Joe Mixon, A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddle, T. He Higgins, Garrett Wilson, Calvin Ridley, Devonta Smith, Chris Olave, and then we're back into running backs again. Ramondre, Jacobs, Brees Hall, Najee Harris, before we get back to Jerry Judy at the wide receivers. Now, I haven't looked at anyone else's rankings. Uh, these are the wide receivers and running backs that I you know, kind of debated with Meany off, off the list that I did. I'm always willing to change this stuff if I hear some good points. I like where I'm sitting with these right now, but I'm, I'm guessing it's a bit off. I mean, at the top, like I think everyone's taking Jefferson first, but where I have some of these running backs mixed in with the overall rankings, from what I've seen from people, how they're talking about running backs versus wide receivers, that I seem to be a little bit more running back heavy near the top than wide receiver heavy, which I do think is... Well, I mean, for years, I was preaching zero RB in like 2014, 2015. It's like, oh my God, you got to draft running backs one rounds one, two, three, and four if you want to have a good team. I was like, nah, just take the wide receivers. They're going to be fine. But the moment every Everyone shifts to drafting wide receivers early. You should probably make the shift to drafting running backs early. That's just how this works. When people are doing one thing, just do the other way and you're going to turn out better. I, I don't disagree. I, I've never really gone away. You know this. I've never gone away from trying to get a stud running back in the first two rounds, elite, whatever you want to name it, the zero bell cow, whatever stupid term is out there. Uh, but I'm not beholden to it. Uh, you know this. I've started drafts, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, just because that's where the value is. That's the biggest thing is always looking at the value and adapting to it in your draft. Uh, the flex leagues. I went running back. I got Barkley in the first round, but then it was three straight wide receivers before I got my second running back. Actually, I think I took a quarterback before. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't even think I must second running back to the seventh round is my point uh, or even the six but the only thing like I don't have a real big issue with anything like I looked and I compared and did a little V lookup and I, like we're only off by ones like maybe three like Austin Eckler Ty- no Tyreek Hill 
three spots lower than Tyreek Hill, but I'm not even that big of an issue on that one. The only one I have a big issue with is it's Tony Pollard, not because it's Tony Pollard like he could finish here. I just don't know if I trust the Cowboys to use him as talking that term, the bell cow role. I think that he could still be a top 10-ish running back. I just think where you have him at seven in front of Nick Chubb and Saquon Barkley specifically, uh, which is obviously you had a different conversation with me talking about just the running backs themselves. I have Pollard at like 14, so I'm not like, it's, he's the turn of the first, second round, but uh, I'm just not ready to take Pollard in front of Chubb and Barkley, who I know aren't going to cede any of their touches. Where I think Barkley is even upset. Yeah, Bar- uh, Barkley doesn't agree. See... Barkley doesn't agree with you back there. By the way, he agrees with me. I can hear it. <laughs> She, she she agrees was, she with agrees me because you can't even co- see yeah you, know, you can't get that right as they're playing over there but I just I worried about Pollard just not even the Deuce Vaughn of like oh Deuce Vaughn's so small so he's not going to get a lot of touches or Malik Davis isn't that good or Ronald Jones is suspended so it doesn't I just think they're going to keep him in that 15 to 20 touch range which is fine because we know Austin Eckler can be a top two running back doing that I just don't know if Pollard quite quite gets to that level with the risk again I'll take the guaranteed volume of Chubb and Barkley, who I think are in the same tier of talent. I see what you mean in terms of the volume. I don't think that Pollard's volume is going to be entirely dissimilar to those. I will concede that it will be behind. I do think that maybe even spelling Pollard a little bit might actually be a good thing for his efficiency and his production. As long as he is the goal line back mm-hmm. on this team, and by all accounts he's going to be, then I see absolutely no issue because he will make it up marginally over the other two. Maybe not Barkley, but you have to remember that the Browns offense and the Giants offense at least in my mind, is significantly worse in terms of scoring points in the Cowboys offense, that you have that higher touchdown upside with Pollard and just chunk yardage that comes through because the offense itself is just a lot better. Uh, you know, maybe the Giants take a huge leap forward, pull a Mao, giant leap forward this year, like they're a stud offense. <laughs> I don't see that happening. Ditto with the Browns. Like the Browns, they'll be all right offenses, but I don't think they're going to be great, where I do think the Cowboys offense could be great. So as long as you get a high efficiency Pollard, maybe not as high of a efficiency as we've seen in previous years but this is like when I'm trying to see the running backs that could potentially finish number one that the downside of Pollard is that he's a 65 percent back who remains highly efficient and that makes him probably running back like number seven on the year or he's the bell cow and he could be the best running back in fantasy football see that's where I think that Nick Chubb falls into that conversation I mean we're talking about somebody just scored a dozen touchdowns with a broken niche offense last year who now has no cream hunt and Jerome Ford is not going to be the pass catching option. Uh, anybody else on that roster is not going to be the pass catching option. And we've always wanted like, Hey, just why not give receptions to Nick Chubb? And we saw some of that last year. I think Nick Chubb, he's already done this in an abbreviated season a couple of years ago with a different kind of mediocre offense where he scored, what was it? 16, 17 touchdowns. I think Nick Chubb could get close to like, again, I'm not, guaranteeing this but i think there's a world where nick chubb gets 20 total touchdowns and can finish as the number one running back i I think that he is well within those range of outcomes but i i I mean we've discussed nick chubb now for what five years in terms of the rankings and you and i have perpetually been down on nick chubb so me just moving him up inside the top 10 overall to running back number five shows how much i like nick chubb this year i think he's significantly better as a fantasy prospect as he's been over the course of the past three years but i just don't see how much more work he can get unless it comes through the receiving game and I know it's going to be it has to be increased as long as he's on the field but I don't see him potentially having the receiving season that Pollard's range of outcomes have like let's say what's best case scenario for Nick Chubb overall in terms of receptions maybe 40 yeah, and that's fine. I mean, his. I think his. We'll put it this way. I'll phrase it differently. It's not necessarily looking at touches. Touch. I think his floor is last year, which was RB five, and that's why I think Nick Chubb is in the conversation to be number one. That's why I would take Nick Chubb over Tony Pollard. I'm not going to sit here and be like, "Oh, you're stupid for doing you that." No, that's why people but watch. Call in, me stupid. That's what people want to see. <laughs> they know. No, because there's other stuff I'll call you stupid for. There's other ones we'll get to. <laughs> this one just isn't stupid enough. No, I just I see, and maybe because Kellen Moore isn't there anymore, maybe they do not pass to their running backs. I mean, not like they pass to their running backs all that often anyway, but Pollard was integral in their passing game as their receiving back. As long as he remains that, stays in that role, 
Like, if we say, what what's Nick's, Nick Chubb's ceiling in terms of receptions? I'm going to say it's like 40. Maybe it's higher than that. I don't know. But that's what I'm putting it as, as I'm running through everything. With Pollard, like, I think a nice, like, median outcome for him is like 55 receptions. But he could, basically, Pollard could be Eckler, but with more volume on the ground. Maybe not get to, like, 90 catches, but he could get to, like, 65 catches, which really vaults him ahead of some of the other guys. Okay. Hey, look, hey, it's not an unvalid point, or... Invalid, invalid. If invalid. I could speak correctly. So yeah, so it's not an invalid point. So I'll, you know, you can. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, you gotta move Pollard down. I'm just I, that's the real difference that I said. It's like I'd have Pollard behind Chubb and Barkley, which slides them behind a re- receiver or two for me as well. That's the only difference. Uh, the only big difference inside, even your top twenty. Uh, gets down to the point where, I mean, I, I don't even have a huge one until we get to 21, which I haven't got to yet, but it's Joe Mixon. And just because it has nothing more to do with that, all of a sudden the civil suit could become an issue and now it opens up the NFL to be able to suspend them I, through that. I, I'm which, not I'm not worried about any, like as we saw with Kamara last year, I'm not worried about that till next year now. Are you? Really? Yeah, I'm not. I don't think it's going to be a mid-season thing. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm wrong all the time. But we. Oh, seen... I was even thinking before the season, uh, well, just because the NFL could do whatever the hell it wants. They could, but if they haven't done it yet, and there's no inklings of it coming yet, that I think this gets kicked down the road till next season. Okay. And that's certainly fair. And if so, I would be before that whole thing. Like, so I put... As of right now, drafting wise, this needs context. So for me, no in context. my rankings, no context, have, Jake. <laughs> you know, just go straight through the numbers. I have Jacobs, Taylor, and Mixon in a tier of their own, understanding they all have top 10, even better potential, but also you have to understand every, but all three of them are in a weird situation. If you have zero concerns, which I hope you're right, I just, I, there's a little bit in the back of my mind, just like, yeah, you know what? Why not take Bijan Robinson, even though we talked about on the show way ago that Bijan Robinson inside the top three running backs was way too high. But if you want to take Derrick Henry and just avoid that risk, uh, if you want to take them and avoid the risk of Taylor that's supposed to show up this week, but still no guarantee, they just they deserve context. There's three there's risks with all three of these guys who all have top 10 upside. Yeah, I think that there's significantly less risk with Mixon and Josh Jacobs at the moment. Like maybe Jacobs sits out week one and it seems like they're planning for that. I went over. I'm going to do some quick note shows on Sunday mornings now, like 20 minutes or so. Kind of recap standout performances from the preseason weekend, any signings, any injuries, any news to keep you all updated. So sub to the channel for that, obviously. And if you're playing in a fantasy football league this year, Jake, you'll know this. Maybe you want to wait a few days for this because I think I have like free money to give people if they do it but uh download like the league safe app or go to leaguesafe.com like listen I've played in leagues Jake with some unreliable commissioners before when it comes to collecting <laughs> money uh league safe takes that completely out of play for anything so you can just put your money onto league safe it's been around for 15 years it's the safest place you can put your money like they're not taking it uh which is great to know and it's publicly traded so they really can't do that they have to show their financials uh, it's a great place to store your money for the year like if you don't want someone running away with your money that is the spot to do it because they literally cannot run away with your money you win your league you will get everything it's not like a place to draft your teams it's a place to put your money i just highly recommend leaguesafe.com so go do that uh instead of just dealing with the house like i still I, like we're switching to league safe this year because I had to go create a new account to store the money for for our league. And the money is just sitting there. And like, not that I'm tempted to spend it, but you see like, oh yeah, there's there's 2,800 bucks just sitting in this account for a while. <laughs> and people are like, oh, you're making so much off interest. It's like, it's the, the lowest interest account of all time. I think I made like- <laughs> the, eight, the 1% interest? Yeah, I, I, it's less than that. <laughs> I think I made like eight bucks off of it over the course of the past four years. So I'll, I'll donate that to the pizza party uh, at the end of the year. But leaguesafe.com is where you should be going. <laughs> Like I mentioned with Mixon, I don't have a ton of concerns. I don't have a ton of concerns with Jacobs on that show with the signings. They signed Damian Williams. He might not even make the team. but it's sh- And they're bringing in Darwin Thompson as well, which either shows me that they're somewhat concerned that Jacobs may not be there week one, or what I presume is more the case that maybe Zamir White sucks. <laughs> So I'm very. I'm glad you said that. We didn't get to it on all in football today. It was like the preseason takeaways that actually matter. I was saving that for Wednesday, uh, but we can definitely talk about it right now. I think if people looked at the box score and just looked at the highlights of that game, they're gonna be like, "Ooh, Samir White's great." Like Josh Jacobs could be in trouble even if he comes back. But if you watched and you watched that second touchdown opportunity where there was pretty good blocking in front of him. And he should have been breaking some of those tackles. It goes back to the same concern coming out of college in my draft write-up. He takes too many hits. 
he can wear down defenses if he's out there for 20 carries, not quite Derrick Henry, but in that fashion. But, so, you know, kind of like a Tyler Algier. Like if you think Tyler Algier is good, but he's just not at the level of these top 12, top 15 running backs, I think that's a good comparison to think about is he should have gotten through. He should have made that a touchdown if we're talking about the talent in the NFL. Of course, it's funny for you and I to sit here and be like, oh, he should have gotten that. <laughs> yeah. But that's our jobs. But like Zamir White, the player should have gotten that. A lot of running backs should have gotten that. There's smaller running backs that should have gotten that. So I don't think Tyler, I don't think Zamir White is a big, I almost said Algier. I don't think uh, he's as big a threat to Jacobs as people might take away if they didn't actually see that play and see that game in full. Do you think that Jacobs misses a game? Because I don't. I don't think he does either. I think it just comes that we've done this. We've done this dance before and it's only really happened one time. It's just so much money on the table. It's $10 million and I get it. I get that they're ticked off and they deserve to be ticked off because of what the NFL does to them. But that's, it could be mutually exclusive. They can be disrespected and wasted and run through the NFL and then they don't get a second contract. And also, you know, the money is kind of, it's still money. Like, so it can be both things. And I, I do think he's out there. I think Jonathan Taylor would be out there unless this injury stuff is real and not, oh, I'm still hurt. Yeah, so I have Taylor at number 31 overall. He is the one that I have the least amount of confidence in, although I kind of agree with you that he probably is ready for week one. I should probably have him ranked higher than this because I have him on the tier. And that's what you can use the 150 rankings for, that if you want to see how I have my tiers done, well, if you just look at the running backs versus the wide receivers in the top 150 rankings, you can see the tiers that I've kind of lumped them all into. So I have him down on a tier with Cam Akers and a little bit below. Basically, it's just him and Cam Akers at 31 and 32. And then below that, it's like... ETN, Dobbins, Madison, James Cook, Javante Williams, Jameer Gibbs, that's sort of the next year. They're, when I did the tiers with Mini, they were all kind of a part of the same one, but I do like Akers and Taylor a little bit more. But maybe Taylor deserves to be up with Jacobs and Brees Hall and those guys, and I was just being a bit too reactionary. But I, something stinks with that situation is all I want to say. Versus the other ones. <laughs> it's called, it's Jim Arce. That's yeah. what stinks. Like the, shut your mouth. Like I, I talked to my buddy yesterday. I said, now that Snyder's gone, if we rank the worst owners in football, yeah. I think there's a conversation. He's number one. Yeah, but I don't think that, and maybe I'm wrong on this. A Colts fan and someone who lives in Indianapolis can tell me. I don't, I think that Arce is just kind of like, I don't a goober. He's just kind of like stupid to see publicly. I, I know he had the problems in the past. Those seem to be in the past at the moment. Who knows? But he just seems like a goofball is the way that I would kind of put it. Like people in the D.C. area viscerally hated Dan Snyder. I don't think people hate Jim Ursay. They just think he's a goof. Uh, that, that'd be an interesting one to see. Like I'm out with like a poll of like the most hated owners. And like it, the, the Dallas fans don't hate Jerry Jones. He's just in, he gets puts his nose into everything. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, Ursay kind of reminds me of like you know the, the XFL Jerry Jones. Like you know, fifty <laughs> percent Jerry I Jones. <laughs> So half half Jerry Jones, half Vince McMahon is what you're telling me? Yeah, a little bit like that. But like he's not hey, I don't think he's hated. I don't know. It'd be interesting. I, I that's the thing though. Can you think of other owners that would really get at the top of the list outside of Ursay? The dude legitimately compared dying and not being in the NFL to Jonathan Taylor, like the, the being on this contract situation. Yeah, but he doesn't seem malicious like Dan Snyder did. That's fair. I mean, I, I mean, he's in this whole other universe of this. He's not even the owner. It's <laughs> all in the conversation for another day. So should yeah. I? Do you think I should bump Taylor back up, like just like behind Bree? Like I'd rather have Bree Hall than Jonathan Taylor. I think anyway. I think. I mean, Delvin Cook didn't sign without me knowing, right? No, but there's, so there's two things here. Is he's he was supposed to be ahead of schedule Javante Williams. Javante Williams is already out there and the Broncos already be like, dude, chill out. You're trying to do too much. Like he wants to keep doing more. Brees Hall is still being limited and Brees Hall is still not being able to get it back out there. So we're assuming a lot of things and the Dalvin Cook rumors, the other rumors that they were kicking the tires and some other running backs and thinking of other things. It's just constant rumor, constant rumor, constant. It's like the Dolphins, constant rumor after constant rumor. It's like, what do they believe? And I don't think there's a world where they believe that Brees Hall is not their best option. He is clearly their best option, but Michael Carter, whatever went wrong with him in that offense last year, at least in one preseason game, not overreacting, but he looked good again. This is still somebody that's valuable in the passing game. If it wasn't just a, you know, if it was just a one year kind of just everything went wrong, he wasn't hundred percent healthy. I just think there's an issue with his volume. Like if you want to play week five and beyond, I could see taking Brees Hall over Jonathan Taylor for the ceiling, kind of similar to Saquon Barkley from a few years ago where we had to wait to week four or five. And of course he twisted his ankle, but that being said, it's 
we might not get the real Brees Hall until October. So I'm going to get the real Jonathan Taylor from week one. If I'm talking Jonathan Taylor versus Brees Hall, it's a conversation already. If you want to argue Brees Hall, sure, but it's a conversation. So why not just take the guy who I know is going to be week one? Uh, Brees Hall might not be until like week five, hundred percent. So that's why I would still go Taylor over Brees Hall. I still like Brees Hall better, but I'm going to move Jonathan Taylor back up to <laughs> one spot behind him, which vaults him from the mid thirties to 27, one spot ahead of Najee Harris. I know people are in on Najee Harris. I just, okay. I just don't want to draft him. I just don't. I don't know why. It's a volume game with him. And it, it, this, we talk I, about I, floors I and ceilings I, I, here. I, I, so. I get it. I just, I'm not interested where no, he's no, no, going. No, 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 no. I'm going like, to make the counter argument. I was going to say, it's like Bijan to me. Like, I like Bijan enough. Like, he's going to be good. Don't want to draft him where he's being taken. And so that's the thing. So it's funny, like where he's been taken, Najee Harris isn't that expensive right now. He's still middle of the second round. But after one week preseason game, for all the Jonathan Warren talk, or Jonathan, Jalen Warren talk, and the concerns about Warren, I think through one preseason game, could just be playing around and see what we have out there. There was a lot of confusing things with the Steelers. Is they rotated all three wide receivers. Deontay Johnson was coming off the field. George Pickens was off the field. Allen Robinson was staying on. Well, one of those two came off, which just makes no sense. Uh, but the rotation with Warren and Najee Harris was almost like a 50-50. And if even you get 70% instead of like 85% Najee Harris, the volume is what offset his inefficiency. So if he's not getting 300 plus touches and all of a sudden it's 250 and you know Warren's getting 100, we need to move Najee Harris down already, even if you weren't off on him. So I do have concerns with Harris. I would actually say for me, it's the Jacobs, Taylor, Mixon conversation. If you want to say Mixon, then Taylor, then Jacobs or whatever order you want to put those three in. And then we talk about Najee Harris and Brees Hall. But I, I understand where you're coming from with Brees Hall. But I think that's that's the little bit of a difference you and I have. Yeah, I'm wish casting on this and I'm betting on talent for that situation. And that maybe him being limited currently in the preseason. Maybe I'm reading the tea leaves wrong on that. I'll really have to pay attention and go frame by frame on hard knocks that maybe they're keeping him limited just to keep him fresh at the same <laughs> time, too. Because like you, you can do anything you want in the preseason and call it whatever you want. Yeah. It might not mean anything. No, the only thing, like preseason, like I jokingly said to uh, my <laughs> my wife's son yesterday, he's like, what have you seen in the preseason? I was like, nothing, it doesn't matter. It was tongue in cheek because there's a little bit. And that what I just talked about the Steelers, who plays with the starters, who doesn't even get to play with the starters. That does mean a little bit, but still like, it's not the be all end all. It's just telling of where these guys are on the depth chart. Like I know we're not going to spend too much time on the Giants, but Isaiah Hodgins not getting the night off while Slayton and Paris Campbell did it's kind of like, ooh, maybe not, you know, Isaiah Hodgins last year was just a kind of like, hey, that was fun while it was because they had nobody else. And he's not even top two or top three potentially for that team. Like, those are the kind of things you have to kind of parse through. Well, one of the things when you, we did the top five breakout show up on the network now, you had listed Khalil Herbert as one of your breakout guys. So I would say oh, that, yes. I mean, listen, he runs with the, the long touchdown pass. I don't really care about that. It's nice to see that he can do it. It doesn't really tell me anything about what he's going to do in the regular season. But him catching passes from Justin Fields as a part of the first team offense is what you would want to see if you were drafting Khalil Herbert, who I have at number 58 in the rankings. I, too, think that he's actually quite good. Yeah, I'm with you, and I'm, I'm still a little even bit higher than you are in Khalil Herbert, but it comes down to, again, one pre... Here's a perfect example. I agree with you on Khalil Herbert and seeing that because the whole threat of Rashawn Johnson was like, ooh, he's going to take the passing game. If there is any, he's going to take it away from Khalil Herbert, who was barely ever used to begin with because of his pass blocking, because he is a good pass catcher. If you were basing... But here's where I was going to say, again, not mutually exclusive. Rashawn Johnson could still be a threat, but if you were only basing on week one of the preseason... Rashawn Johnson's fourth on the depth chart. Well, we was, know that's he, not he, true. He's also banged up too, so he wasn't getting the same amount. I know, of that, and that's so there's you, a lot of context there behind you, it. You have to put it into context. But if you were just looking at the box scores, you may man, Justin Fields had a great game. It's like, did he? <laughs> he threw three. No, he completed gonna, three passes throw. behind the line of scrimmage for like 200 yards. <laughs> I was going to say, you mean he's not going to complete 100% of his passes and two touchdowns out of three attempts every single time? Yeah, with negative air yards. So there's a bit of context <laughs> when you start going back and watching what actually happened with the first team stuff. But the encouraging thing is that they are throwing screen passes to both Herbert and DJ yes. Moore, running as a part of Team 1. Like, that's the stuff that you want to take from the preseason. I agree with you. And trying to put it into the proper context to see if you can pinpoint where the playing time is going to come from. When do you think we're going to see Kyler Murray? Mm, possibly 2024. <laughs> like, legitimately, I think midseason's a realistic expectation. And then this team is bad as everybody expects it to be. And they have one win, maybe two. Why are you bringing them back? Like, this team, talent, depth chart, top to bottom on offense and defense is lacking across the board. And so 
what are you bringing Kyler Murray back for it? Not to mention, like, like think about this from the NFL perspective is if the Arizona Cardinals are really serious about like, you know what, maybe he's not our future anymore. And you want to dangle him in a trade. Why are you going to bring him back to potentially just get hurt anyway? His, his, value of what if is similar to fantasy it's like a guy's coming back from injury that like people are like oh it's always best case scenario that happens in the nfl too like if he never steps on the field like trade value kyler murray if he's 100 percent in 2024 is better than kyler murray coming back playing maybe not 100 percent underperforming and driving down his own value i just think there's a possible i would say 30 to 40 percent chance we don't say kyler murray until 2024 okay i have camara at number 60 should that be higher even with the suspension I, I think that's a fair spot. Actually, I do have him higher, but not much. I have him by like seven or eight spots yeah, higher. But, like, somebody just, actually even asked me but, in my ranking. But that's something that I, I gleaned from week one of the preseason because I hadn't done the show yet because the Saints played on Sunday when I did it and I recorded it Sunday morning that you know, when we saw the first team offense out there, it was Kamara, 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 Kamara. That's <laughs> where they wanted to go in that offense. It was not the split with Jamal Williams that maybe that we thought it was going to be. Now you're not going to have him for probably the best time not to have him during the season the first three weeks but you can easily plug and play with no teams on by but I started to look at it I was like would I really want to draft I don't know David Montgomery or Miles Sanders or Aaron Jones over Kamara the answer is no I'd rather have Kamara so now that I look at it like would you rather have Javante Williams or Kamara or is he even higher than that like Alexander Madison or Kamara Kamara Dobbins or Kamara Dobbins each although that's that's getting close so like this is starting to like it's getting to the jacobs he's basically turning into taylor combined with jacobs like is it injury even though he played healthy towards the end of last year they were talking about he got nicked up this offseason but injury and then disgruntledness and like hopefully it's just a, a holdout and stay healthy situation i don't but know I, there's a little bit of concern there yeah you know what i'm gonna throw him above all these guys i'm gonna put him at number 33 one spot behind cam Akers. i'm in you know, that's I'll, I'll eat the I have weeks. Him, I have him two spots. I have I go Acres, Damian Pierce, Camara. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'd rather have Camara than Damian Pierce. I'm not as high on Damian Pierce this year. Uh, I think he's good, but as a low end running back too. Like, he sounds like one of those I, guys that if you, if you didn't draft a running back until the seventh round, I feel like he would be a good pick there. I think he should be going before that again to glean from week one. I, and this is coming from somebody like, so this is how we can ebb and flow with things. You know, I was super high on Damian Pierce because I thought he was the best running back in that backfield and would take over. And he did last year, but coming from that same person and I'm like coming for myself here is like when they signed Devin Singletary is like, ah, like, is this now going to be a 60, 40 split? Like Singletary is not insignificant. And then preseason week one happened and Singletary wasn't the pass catcher involved with Damian Pierce. He was essentially treated as in the back like if you watch that game it's Devin Singletary is the handcuff to Damian Pierce which you're probably not drafting him as a handcuff you're not just you just say ignore it but Agumba Wally your guy the goon, the goon. was the pass catcher he loves, so, he loves so I actually moved passes. Damian Pierce up from that I, I moved Pierce up because of that as Singletary doesn't look to be a threat at all okay what do you do with the uh, etchin because it seems like uh, he might be a part-time player here yeah, and then if you're going again if you're going off week one of the preseason it's not it's all etn like so yeah. it's again how much you want to put into week one weight which also is another interesting thing in that game christian kirk coming off the field for two wide receiver sets it was zay jones and calvin ridley uh the one that was in your ranking and the reason i brought that up too in this whole conversation i am fine where, where do you have etn again we're almost lockstep on etn yeah, so I, I have no I, problem I, with him being top 35 i i have him 36th overall that is running back 16. Yeah, I have him slightly higher. I have him running back 14, and I have him at 30th. So we're not that far apart. The interesting thing from that game is I was going to say Calvin Ridley is much higher than I have him. We've had that conversation before we go down that road again, if you want to watch that other show. But I will say, as my gap from you on Calvin Ridley is at 20 right now, it's probably going to be cl- I, this is Monday. I'm going to redo all my projections and rankings on Monday after we watch week one. I'm probably moving it up a little bit because that Christian Kirk thing was just baffling. Like I, you paid him so much money. He had his breakout season. It was everything you wanted him to be. And yes, Zay Jones is underrated, but the fact that he kept coming off the field with only two wide receivers and it was Jones and Ridley. Uh, my concerns was Ridley like, you know, two year layoff, but there seemed to be zero concern with the team. And Trevor Lawrence seems to have a real nice connection already. I will move Calvin Ridley up. Still probably not. I would take Devonta Smith and Chris Olave still. Uh, but outside of the wide receivers of those two, 
he's probably right there in that conversation after those two for me now. And listen, I, I can't begrudge you if you want to take Smith and Olave, who I have just behind him in the ranking. So that's wide receiver 13, 14, and 15. Calvin Ridley, if it's right, is a league winner this year. So I'm fine with taking him over those guys. Where yeah. I mean, Olave I, could, I don't disagree with Olave you could be the same thing. But I mean, Slant Boy was looking pretty good. Playing. <laughs> out <Boy>. there. <laughs> the, actually, I, I debunked that myth, by the way, I, last I know, year. It's, it's funny. I, to find I know it's funny to say. But the, the one I wanted to ask you, this kind of like turn it back at you, is interestingly enough... When I adjust for Ridley, he's going to jump in front of this wide receiver who I'm surprisingly lower on than you. I can get the question and see what you're thinking. T. Higgins. He, he, I, I know you love some he, T. Higgins. Yep, T. He Higgins. Uh, I actually have him down at 27. You have him at 19. So we're off by a little bit on him. And if I adjust my rankings to where I said Devonta Smith, Chris Olave, Ridley, he would jump T. Higgins now. I think it's just more of a bet that Burrow is going to be fine. I do think that he has the best chance of re-injury, at least from what we've seen so far this season with the calf problem, but it seems like he's going to be ready for week one. Tower Boyd tends to get more phased in and out of this offense. And listen, Jamar Chase, I have ranked at number, was it three at wide receiver because he's going to right. have these big league winning games for you. But like Higgins isn't that far behind in terms of like overall fantasy points. He's he just, not. He just does it in a bit of a different way. And I have him down. Like I only have him projected for five touchdowns this year, but that makes him wide receiver 17 in the projections. But if you give him eight, all of a sudden he's wide receiver. He's like better than Chris Godwin kind of thing. So I just think there's still significant upside and more to unlock with this offense. And it's probably the last year he's going to be there. So they might not be afraid just to keep running him out there over and over and over and over. Just like we see with running backs. A lot of the times when you're in your final year of your deal. So a part of my thought process too with the Devontae Smith is that run that Devontae Smith had at the second half or later uh, kind of the second half of the second half last year. And maybe I'm waiting that a little bit too much, but the volatility of T Higgins of, especially towards the end of the year, like three points and then 15 and like 25 and then four. Like, so I think that's where it comes out. It's like, I think Devontae Smith, you talk about ceilings. I think Devontae Smith has a world where all of a sudden we're talking about the back in the day, Aaron Rodgers with like, you know, uh, who is it? Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb, where they both finished top 10, top 12. I think that's a little bit more plausible with them just because, yeah, Tyler Boyd does get phased out. But there's just more for the Bengals offense to go around than there is with, you know, it's just Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown. I agree, but, and people will see this on Thursday show when we talk about the best quarterbacks, non-fantasy related, but like we, we do a ranking of the top 10 quarterbacks that if you were just starting a team now, you got to have them for two years, who would you take? We talked a lot about Hertz and how he stacks up against like Mahomes and the upper echelon of where he's at. And I kind of made the case that last season might be the best season we ever see from Jalen Hurts, which isn't to say that he won't be good, but his season was so outrageous. It's kind of like, it's a little bit like Lamar 2019, where he just was never going to do that again. And then you have to kind of readjust your expectations for everyone on that roster moving forward. And I can just see him just you know, being 10% worse or something like that. But the one thing that I don't see going away is the amount of, the amount of, and it's the same as the Josh Allen problem when it comes to Buffalo running backs, but you can kind of paste this onto receivers as well, that if they're not scoring long touchdowns, I mean, if I was going to tell you who leads the Eagles in red zone touchdowns this year, my guess would be A.J. Brown. After that, it would be Dallas Goddard. Smith would be at the very lowest point of that list because number one is going to be Jalen Hurts rushing in the ball and just not taking the taking those opportunities away for passing touchdowns. And I can just see everyone's numbers being down this year versus what we saw last year. Could be wrong. Hurts could be the best quarterback in football. But I think logic would dictate that a step back is far more within the range of outcomes, probable outcomes, than moving forward in this offense. Mm, so, and that's where, that, so I actually think there is more room for okay. an increase at 22 touchdowns. 22, that's all he threw last year. 3,600 and whatever it was and 22 touchdowns. I think there's still more for Hurts in the passing game. Even if he only throws 36 whatever in yards again, I still think that and when Jalen Hurts does is, so if you want to talk fantasy, maybe the offset is he doesn't run as much because he throws more touchdowns. So there's the offset in fantasy. Like, oh, it's still, we actually do see a decrease. I think realistic life-wise, like NFL player, I think he could be better of passing touchdowns, even potentially a better passer, which is good for Smith and A.J. Brown, even if it takes away from Jalen Hurts, the fantasy player, because they're rushing. So that's the only one. Um, do you want to know inside your top 30 who my biggest beef is with? Because I told you I was going to tell you you're stupid. Um, 
Jerry Judy. Yep. There you go. Boom. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, 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 like, I don't, I know don't disagree with, with I, the talent. I, I don't know what to do with them. Like I'm at 29. Is that high or low on Jerry Judy? I have no idea. It's high for me. Oh, overall, yeah. it's it's high, but it's not that high. You're you're closer to the the drafting consensus at ADP than I am. Um, but the, what it comes down to, and this has nothing to do with the first game, and like, oh, Cortland Sutton is back, and like Cortland Sutton's got his own issues. I just don't think it's clearly Jerry Judy the lead, and we're talking. And I know you're not, and you can run the Sims, you can adjust their percentages, all that type of stuff. But it feels like the drafting of Jerry Judy is banking on two things that Russell Wilson does bounce back, which I believe is very plausible under Sean Payton, but that he's going to have like a 22, 23, 24% target share. And I just, I don't buy that even with the Tim Patrick injury. And I think it's going to be very close to like the 1920, which they have been with Cortland Sutton. And yes, Cortland Sutton's got his own issues. I'm not saying put Cortland Sutton here and flip him with Jerry Judy. I just don't know that. I feel like Jerry Judy at 28 is peak best case scenario, Jerry Judy, and nothing can go wrong. You've sold me. So let's let's re-rank him amongst wide receivers, and I'll fit him into the top 150 overall. Would you rather have a Amari Cooper or Jerry Judy? I've been looking for any excuse not to Mar- rank Judy higher, but meaning like kind of sold me. <laughs> but now I'm talking to you. I'm like Trump. The last person I talked to is the person I believe. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would still take Amari Cooper. <laughs> Debo Samuel. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I'm way down on Debo Samuel. So I would actually take Judy here. Okay, would you take like McLaurin or Judy? So that... The, the, I think Amari is the good one here. Like maybe one spot after it's Amari. <laughs> it's Amari. I'll tell you a little here. For me, I have Judy at 26 at wide receiver. I have Godwin, London, Ayuk, Lockett, Hopkins is the ones directly in front of him. Uh, I have Hopkins above him. I have Evans above him. I have Cooper above him. I have Ayuk, Samuel, Debo, and Ayuk are the two directly following him. I'm a bit lower on Drake London because I don't like the Atlanta offense. I, I don't think you're wrong in not liking the Atlanta offense, but you we had that conversation in another one of your shows too, as I do believe that Desmond Ritter can be a league average quarterback, which is not saying much for him as a passer. I'm just saying that like that's all it takes when you only have this is this is the Eagles without a Dallas Goddard, and then it's just your top two options are Pitts and London, which by the way, Pitts still doesn't look 100% uh back from his injury so i'm just i'm just banking on target share even if it's inefficient target share from london yeah i mean i made a big bet on mike evans one year because of that and i won everything because of it so that's actually a good comparison i think it can go 55 of his passes it can go right the problem is i even at the time i thought that Jameis was better than ritter is because Jameis. i mean if there's one thing Jameis Mm. can do it's just chuck it up (laughs) <laughs> well, if, until he turned into that checkdown version for a brief spell with the Saints, where he was all yeah, being safe. I'm, ta- and I'm talking about like vintage, <laughs> vintage Tampa Jameis, who would do you a solid in fantasy football by throwing a pick six, getting himself behind, meaning they couldn't run the ball ever. They had to pass and piling up. How many fourth quarters points. did Jameis go from like five to twenty five points like that? It was the best. Him and Evans, you just watch them skyrocket. If you had them on DraftKings up the leaderboard or coming back in your season long fantasy football league. I loved it. So I'll bump Judy down to 23 at wide receiver, which bumps him down pre putting in tight ends and quarterbacks, which we're going to do here in a second down to number 44 in the top 150, but he'll end up being lower than that. Once we fit in a couple more of these names. So let's add in the QBs right now. You want to add in the tight ends or the QBs first, and we'll try to make this quick for people. I mean, QBs are easy for me, so let's do that. All right, so I have Mahomes, Allen, Hurts, Lamar, Burrow is the top five, then Fields, Herbert, Lawrence, Anthony Richardson, Deshaun Watson, Daniel Jones. Next is my quarterback okay. rankings for the year. So Mahomes, I assume you have Mahomes at number one? Yeah, I go Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, and I sandwich them. They're back to back to back. I have them 31, 32, and 33. Okay, so I, I'm good with putting that. I think that those three are on a tier by themselves when it comes down to it. So... Who did you have them coming in after? Like, would I rather have Christian Watson or Patrick Mahomes this year? I think is sort of what I'm struggling Patrick with right Mahomes. now. Would you rather have DeAndre Hopkins I'd rather, or Patrick Mahomes? Patrick Mahomes. I'd rather have ETN and T. Higgins than Patrick Mahomes, but then all those names you mentioned, I would ever ha- rather have Patrick Mahomes. I'd rather have Patrick Mahomes over Gibbs, Metcalf, Sanders, those that Cooper, Watson, you mentioned. Like, they're all, all three of them are ahead of all those names for me. I keep looking at this list, and I feel like I have James Cook really high anyway, but I have him behind the Jameer Gibbs <laughs> talk show, Alexander Madison, Dobbins. I might just like James Cook better than all of these guys. 
You do. You you clearly you are the James Cook hype train. There's no question about it. Didn't even know that. Didn't realize that I was the James Cook hype train. I mean, Run the Sims is the James Cook hype train. Run the Sims loves James Cook. I, I will tell you, I pushed back on James Cook the last time you and I talked, and that was a factor of purely Damian Harris red zone. All the red zone touchdowns and touches for, but Damian Harris is banged up now. Like they're, like they're Damian, talking about, so. Damien Harris what, what, is always banged up, and so maybe it ends up being okay. Octavius Murray who ends up being... I mean, the thing you always have to fade is Josh Allen just scoring all the... It's like the jo Jalen Hurts thing. With any Eagles running back, you have to worry about Josh Allen stealing all the... vulturing all right. these goal line touchdowns. Well, that was my concern, is that Josh, Josh Allen takes so much of them away, and that Damien Harris gets 80% of the rest, and James Cook finished the season with, like, a Matt Forte year, which could be great. I mean, Matt Forte doubled, like, what, 13, 1,400 yards, a lot in the receiving game, and then four touchdowns like that, you know, that's the worry. But if he did that, it's just the concern of like, even if there's that much volume, especially from Josh Allen, which there's been so many reports, like is Josh Allen going to throw more to James Cook? Is it going to be Dalton Kincaid? They're going to run more 12, but Dalton Kincaid is going to be a wide receiver. And then the next day is Trent Sherfield. The next day it's like, I just feel like I'd rather avoid if James Cook is going to be inside the top 40 where you have him. That's my biggest issue. I am at 42 now that I put the quarterbacks in. He was, okay. he was at 39, Barely, yeah. now he's at 42. They're going to get pushed down the rankings a little bit once we add in some of these names. How do you feel about Lamar? Because the more I hear about Lamar, the less I like about it. I just feel like he's going to run less. Really? Why? I, I just don't think he's going to run as much. Oh. And if he's not running, then I don't, think I don't he, super I, want him. I, so, so there's a couple factors here. I'm not that concerned about the running because we've played this game before. Cam Newton's going to run less. Josh Allen's going to run less. They like, And they still run, even what, 90% is still going to be fantasy game-breaking for what Lamar Jackson does. Like maybe he doesn't run for 1,000, 1,100 yards, but then he runs for eight or 900. Okay, no problem. I'm not that concerned. I actually think the only concern I have is how the wide receivers shake up. As of right now, Bateman's still a question mark, but – with Flowers and Bateman and what they can do with Mark Andrews and then whether or not Odell Beckham's even anything at this point, I don't care. What I like about what they're doing with Lamar Jackson is what they did with Josh Allen. They actually did it with Lamar Jackson earlier in his career. I mean, back in the days of Willie Sneed, just finding dudes who know how to get open. Like, just get open. We don't need you throwing like Cam Newton back in the day. We don't need you throwing to Devin Funches and Kellen Benjamin who can't separate, but they'll come down with all the balls because they're 6'5". No, they won't. They're, they suck at 50-50 passes because they're big and lumbering. So what they're doing by drafting and Zay Flowers clearly shows like let's keep this you know the, the ability to separate which Lamar Jackson can hit those throws so I'm fine I don't think Lamar Jackson necessarily throws 30 touchdowns but if he just gets back to being a semi-capable quarterback hell here's the very easy way to look at it Pat you give Lamar Jackson's rushing numbers and even if they're 90 percent to Daniel Jones last year and then we're still talking about a top five quarterback Daniel Jones sucked as a passer and he was still a top 10 quarterback because he ran 707. So do you think it's Lamar Burrow Fields on this next tier would you shrink that tier would you extend yes. this tier? No that is my that is my tier okay. the Joe Burrow I pulled out by himself into like one two three four five and then six just hanging on just in case he misses one week and I made that I think they made the argument with you but the whole point was if I'm drafting a top six quarterback I'm not drafting a second quarterback but now because of Burrow's question for week one you do have to draft a draft a second quarterback and I just don't like having to add that investment to a first five six round drafted quarterback pick that's that's the only reason but otherwise if I knew he was starting week one he would be in that tier. Okay, so I'll throw some names at you to see where they go in the overall ranking. So it'll be a Lamar or, because that will be a tier of three quarterbacks that get inserted. Deontay Johnson or Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson. Okay. Jerry Judy or Lamar Jackson? Ooh, it's close, but Lamar. Aaron Jones or Lamar Jackson? Aaron Jones in that case. Miles Sanders or Lamar Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> so this, we're we're around Lamar the break. Jackson. We're around we're around the breaking yeah. point right now. How about Kenneth Walker, Damian Pierce, Isaiah Pacheco, those guys? Uh not Damian Pierce, but all the rest. Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson after Aaron Jones sounds like the right spot. Yeah. So that would make for, Lamar just for you. Yeah, that would make Lamar fifty six, Fields fifty seven, and Burrow. 56. I was going to say I'm, a, I'm a fifty. You're, there you go. That, that, yeah. So yeah. So I actually go Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields fifty fifty one, and then a few, but not even a full round, and then Joe Burrow just because of the risk. Yeah, I'll just throw that week a, one thing for people for an easier explanation of the rankings when people look at it. I think it's easier to see and just like, keep them all together in, in groups to keep them all together. And, you know, 
you can go with it that way. So the next tier of quarterbacks, Herbert Lawrence, Anthony Richardson, Deshaun Watson, Daniel Jones, Aaron Rodgers, Tua. Does that go Herbert Lawrence Richardson? Because obviously I really like Richardson. Does Watson enter that tier? Does Daniel Jones enter that tier? Or do you think it's just those three guys? I would go Herbert Lawrence Watson and Richardson. And let's remember Watson is top five quarterback. I know a lot of it is like we're just kind of saying we hope last year was an anomaly with super rust with how much he laid off. There's risk, which is why Deshaun Watson's down here at like eight or nine, and he's not in the conversation with Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields. We're still talking about somebody with the Texans. Again, top five, top five, top five, top five. So if there's anything, which as of right now, Elijah Moore's the three, which is one of the better threes to have in the league, assumably, uh, and he bounces back and he runs a little bit more, a little comfortable behind the line this year, uh, I think Watson deserves to be in this tier. Okay, so I'll keep Watson, and I'm going to put Daniel Jones in that tier too. I just don't see why we're all off of Daniel Jones after he showed what he can do as a fantasy quarterback, and I think the Giants are going to be worse. Which... Because what if it's only 505 instead of 707? Well, then you, have to, then you have to live with it. No, I know. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm asking, I'm legitimately, because it's like the pushback of the Jalen Hurts. Like, where does it get better for Daniel Jones last I mean, year? Maybe he's a competent passer and throws for touchdowns. <laughs> Darren Waller is going to change everything for him. It may change something. Who knows? But like, even at his baseline, what is he, quarterback? Oh, you, you kind of brought up Sam Howell. And we did Man. see a lot of the Sam Howell that you talked about in week one of the preseason between the rushing totals and the connection with Jahan Dotson that, uh, Jones just seems like a better version of that. So I can see that moving forward. And if the defense takes a little bit of a step back, which it could, then you might see even more running and even more passing from Daniel Jones. And I don't care about the turnovers. You hope. Yeah, you, you hope. I mean, that's why I'm fucking ranking him here because but, I hope that's how no, it turns I know, out. But, but have you ever seen a team with a bigger collection of number three wide receivers trying to be ones and twos? Yeah, the Giants last year. <laughs> All right, fine. So with these guys, <laughs> like, would you go Justin Herbert or Brendan Cooks? Mm, Herbert, and I'm not even the Herbert. I'm not even a Herbert guy. Well, I mean, I'm, when Herbert. I say Herbert, I mean this tier of quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, DeAndre Swift or this tier. <sighs> Swift sucks. This tier worry, of quarterbacks. That's that. That's going to be a cluster F. Okay, John Dotson or this tier of quarterbacks. Your Dotson. Guy. Uh, Dotson. Jordan yeah. Addison. The need for speed. Jordan Addison. This tier of quarterbacks. All right. So he's kind of like after Dotson, like in the middle of this range of wide receiver that I have here. It's like Deontay Johnson, Michael Pittman, Tower Lockett, Pickens, Kirk, Dotson, the quarterbacks into Addison, Gabe Davis, Brendan Cooks. That makes sense to you? Wait, I'm like 70, 75. Yeah. Yeah. 73 range is what it would be. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right, so there we go on that front. And then we can check in the rest of the quarterbacks later. I think that's, you know, pick your poison. Like, they're going to be way down on this list because I think once you get to Aaron Rodgers, like Rodgers, Tua, Dak, Goff, Cousins, Geno, Howell, Russell Wilson, Derek Carr, Stafford, even Jordan Love, potentially. There's 11 names for you. Pick whichever fucking one you want. I don't care. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm, I'm with you. So it's like after the top three tiers, if you don't get involved there, just wait till the end game. Okay, so let's put in the tight ends now, which I think is going to not necessarily be tricky, but I guess how high is too high for Kelsey? Like, does he go inside the top 10? Or, I mean, I've been, I'm at 11. You have him at 11. So putting him at 11 right now would sandwich him in between Barkley and Derrick Henry. I'm okay with that. Would you rather and have... You know, I push back on you on Kelsey every single year. Every year. But I feel like <laughs> even having him, let's say I rank him at 12, one spot behind Derrick Henry. I think I would rather have Derrick Henry. I'm, I'm torn on it. I feel like that's low for me on Kelsey with the way I've been ranking him for years. I know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's strange. I actually have him sandwiched between Diggs and Henry uh, just for our differences because you have Diggs behind Henry. So that's just our slight differences right there. But, you know, uh, I, 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 I know there's people arguing. I'm going to put him at number nine huh? behind that tier of running huh? back of Eckler, Pollard, and Chubb. Then Kelsey at nine. That makes Devontae Adams number and 10, Devontae. Saquon and Henry at 11 and 12. Okay. I hate the Saquon Barkley part of it, but you're all fine. You're fine. That's fine. So now we have Andrews, Hawkinson, Waller, Kittle, Me Timbers, Kyle Pitts, Goddard, Fryermuth. I really like Higby, so I ranked him inside the top 10. I have Njoku and Ingram there. Njoku's going to fucking suck. I know it. He sucks every <laughs> I, year. Every year he sucks. I, Kyle Pitts I have is zero becoming, Njoku. 
like Kyle Pitts might become the new Njoku that every year we look at it, it's like, man, this guy's going to be awesome. Look at this new offense. Look at these new guys. <laughs> and every year that it's like the same him. thing. <laughs> the guy had a thousand yards in his rookie season. I Don't know, do that to Kyle I know, Pitts. That's dirty. He, he was good. Who knows? So like our Andrews, Hawkinson, Waller, Kittle a tier is Andrews by himself. Like, how do you break down that those next four tight ends? I have Andrews, Kittle, Hawkinson as a tier. Those three. So you don't have Waller as a part of that? No. How come? I I think at 30 at this point of the injuries racking up and being on the Giants offense, it's just a lot of concerns. Even if he does get 22, 23% of the target share and stays healthy. And this is from somebody, I did buy six bold predictions this year. And I said, great, that I just didn't throw out bold predictions. I said, here's the bold prediction and how it happens. I said, Waller dethrones Travis Kelsey. How it happens is Daniel Jones takes the step forward. Everybody wants him to take forward. Darren Waller gets 25% of the team's target share like the years before where he was just 0.1 points per game behind Travis Kelsey. And Kelsey just has one of his odd years, which has been like still great, but not the massive Travis Kelsey. And that's how it happens. Do I think it happens? No, I'd give it like a 5% chance. But that's because... Daniel Jones having to do that. Darren Waller having to stay healthy. Does he really get that target share? How much do they run and lean on Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones? Which is all those factors. I think if you look at Hawkins and Kittle and Andrews, they're the clear one or twos on their team and just in a much better situation. I like Andrews and Hawkinson as a tier by themselves when I'm putting them into these rankings. I still like Waller more than Kittle, so they will be on a tier. Why wouldn't you put Kittle on that tier? What's your worries about Kittle? Oh, just that entire offense. I kind of think that Brock Purdy might stink, so that's not good. Uh, Debo is going to be there. I think they're <laughs> going to be more run-heavy than anything else, and Kittle's going to have his fine games, but he's not going to be the focal point of that offense. He's going to have games that win but you weeks. But he was with Brock Purdy. Yeah, that's great. Then we he was, we have a five game sample of that with the other guys. I I mean, even with Waller, like he's going to be the wide receiver one on that team. Like, there's no one nearly as sure. good as him as long as he's healthy. And we've seen Kittle have his injury problems as well. And an offense like if we're down on Debo, and I know you like Ayuk, and we're ranking McCaffrey pretty high as well, that like the numbers have to come from somewhere. I just don't see as much consistency right. with Kittle, plus the injury risk that goes along with it, where at least with Waller, yeah, you're sweating a, a shitty quarterback, but Purdy could suck too. Who knows? He's coming off a, an arm injury quarterbacks like don't get ever, and he was the last pick in the draft. Maybe he's amazing. I don't know. Maybe Sam Darnold's playing quarterback for them five weeks into the season. I don't know about that either. But with Waller, as long as he is out there, he is their best option after Barkley and probably the number one option in the receiving game in terms of market share of targets. And I'm just going to bank on that. But that's why I like Hawkinson and Andrews better than these guys. Okay. the And that's where the difference comes in. I think Purdy is no worse than Daniel Jones as a passer. And I think what we've seen is that Ayuk and Kittle are the ones and two. And that similar to Andrews, he's the two. I just, I think Kittle's definitively one of the top two options for Purdy. And that's what, it, and that if Purdy gets hurt again, and all of a sudden we're looking at Trey Lance or even Sam Darnold, like that could shift everything, which was why last year, if you remember, my biggest concern about all three of them is we had rarely seen all three play together healthy from the year before that, let alone the quarterback switch, which was initially Trey Lance last year. So I agree there's risk. I just, I go Kittle with Hawkinson. I actually have them back to back in my rank. So I'm, I'm just higher on Kittle, but I found so far in drafts, I seem to be higher on Kittle anyway. All right. You're not, you can sell me on a lot of things. You're not selling me on Kittle this high in the rankings. So let's put, in an, <laughs> let's put in Andrews and Hawkinson as a pair into the rankings. Would you put them above the first tier of quarterbacks? Like, would you rather have Mahomes or Mark Andrews? No. Okay. No, all, all, all of them behind them, first tier quarterbacks. All right. Would you rather have James Cook? That tier of running back. It doesn't need to be James Cook. It's like <laughs> Etienne through Javante Williams or these tight ends. Uh, so not through. There's Etienne. I can, I would take Brees Hall, Jameer Gibbs. But well, I have Brees Hall way even, higher. So I'll, mm -hmm. I know. So, well, here's my split. Akers to Madison. I would go Akers, these tight ends. Actually, I think I could even take Mark Andrews over Akers uh, just because of the safety of it. So I would actually, I know you want to group them all together, but here's the difference. I have Mark Andrews over Cam Akers, but then I have Kittle and Hawkinson behind Cam Akers. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to drop them in behind ETN at 40 and 41. Okay. So That's actually funny enough. Mark Andrews is 35, and then Kittle and Hawkinson are 43 and 44, so you split the difference. So now I have Waller's, Kittle, Pitts. Do you think Goddard is on their tier, or do you think he's a bit he's a closer? Do you think Goddard is closer to Pitts, or he's closer to Fryermuth? 
Mm, I think it's closer to Pitts. I have for my tier, I have Waller, Goddard, and Pitts in the next tier. Okay, I'm gonna have Waller, Kittle, Pitts, and Goddard in this tier. So where did they go? Would you rather have Terry McLaurin or those guys? Mm, I'd rather have Terry McLaurin. Would you rather have Isaiah Pacheco or those guys? Ooh. <laughs> right now? Those yeah. guys. Uh, this Pacheco injury is getting like, what the hell is going on with this? All right, Miles Sanders or those guys. <sighs> Miles Sanders, just because right. the volume. Yeah. That's the spot right there. Miles Sanders, Darren Waller, George Kittle, Kyle Pitts. So that makes Waller number 63, Kittle 64, Pitts 65, and Goddard 66 in the rankings. So my next tier of guys, and we can even go through the rest of the tight ends, although it's once you get outside the top 10, it's a lot like quarterbacks. It doesn't really matter. I think that the next three tight ends actually matter to your fantasy team, and that would be mm-hmm. Fryermuth. Higby and Ingram. Those would be the ones for me. <laughs> you left one out in a different order. But Ooh, we're in oh, the same conversation. I go, in, I, I go Ingr- Ingram, Hick. No, Schultz. Although that could change. That first game, I don't, like he, there's a perfect example talking about the preseason. He ran a lot with the second team offense. Now, is that Schultz isn't comfortable with the Texans offense yet? Is that he was hurt, so they want to make sure he gets out there and get reps? Or is Schultz potentially going to split the tight end work? If it's the split the tight end work, he needs to move down my rankings. They do have as of right now, four tight ends, I think. All right, yeah. And so this has turned out to be like the Colts situation for years on end. It's going to be Mo'Ally Cox. It's going to yeah, be Jelani Woods. Yeah, like, who, who is the super athlete of these? Is that Quint? Remember? What game was it last year? The Texans were in prime time Quentin for some reason. Quentin Tarantino? Yeah, that guy. And he <laughs> caught the first touchdown. Everyone was like, what the fuck is this guy? I think it was Christmas Day. <laughs> Tegan, I don't, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this last I, name. I, be, I like believe he is Quintin, injured at the Quintaro. moment. Yeah, Quintaro, I think. Yeah, is what he got is. banged. Uh, yeah, so Fryermuth, so, Hig- um, I like Fryermuth, Higby, Evan Ingram, and I have it written as even Ingram. So I do I like those three. All right. Schultz is in the conversation for me. He's, he's, not, he's not for me. I'd rather have Dulcich. I might even. Okay. Rather... I don't have Njoku in this conversation. Yeah, I'm probably going to just dump. I hate Njoku. I don't know why I ranked him there. Good thing those rankings aren't published yet, so people can't see what I'm looking at my sheet. Sometimes you just What's like, the difference between Njoku and Cole Komet and 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 Conquo and Vert Vert? <laughs> Great Vert. Vert. <laughs> I mean Hunter Henry and Hayden Hurst might actually be the answers. Like if you want like Jabroni tight end to play for a week, like those are the options who are just gonna be available and are no different than any one of these guys. Not Mike Gesicki, too. Went back to the run in the 12 set of the we're not, New we're not, offense. We're not playing Mike Gesicki, okay? It's not happening. <laughs> You're not buying the Dalton Kincaid at wide receiver? No, I'm not buying Dalton Kincaid at wide receiver. Are you? <laughs> no. I tell you, the one I'm moving down significantly is Dulcich. For, I mean, he, John Payton brought in Troutman. And was like, guess who's playing? Troutman, <laughs> not Trout- Dulcich. Old Trout face. So let's put yeah. let's put Fryermouth in. Would you rather have Brennan Cooks or Pat Fryermouth? I'd rather have Brennan Cooks. Cooks. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, AJ Dillon, Jarek McKinnon, Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson. I think I'd still rather have all those guys. All of them. Yeah. Gainwell, the funny thing is, this Ga- tier Ga- is kind of like the tier that I. F- Go ahead, Kenneth Gainwell. I was going to say Gainwell. I, I, I have Gainwell and Charbonnet in that tier of running backs as well. I would take, I would take, yeah, I would take them too, because the upside, if those hit versus the, like, if these tight ends hit, we're like still tight end six, seven, like, what is that? You know, that, that's why I'd just rather take the upside of what if the running back or wide receiver hits. I think I know, would you rather take Quentin Johnson or those tight ends? Quentin Johnston. Sky Moore. And I'm the lowest on Quentin Johnston by, by a lot of sites. Uh, I'd probably still, yeah, I would More. go. Jaden Reed. Push the tight ends J- Jaden Reed or the tight ends. Oh, these tight ends. Now, now I'm going these tight ends. All right. So there's a little I, bit of advantage. I, I, after, after that, then we have like Tyler Boyd, Nico Collins, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, Jalen Warren, yeah. Colonel Mostar, Juju Smith Schuster, El- Elijah Moore. Yeah, Algier, those like those type of guys. Uh, one guy I did want to bump up yeah. was Zay Flowers, though. For some reason, I had him behind Odell Beckham, and that's not right. He's supposed to be up where Brennan Cooks is at 88. I like, I'm like. i just going to go with Zay Flowers on Baltimore and just make that the guy I'm going to target in drafts. I'm not going to spread it around. I'm just going to draft him and see how it works out. <laughs> what, if the, the, what if the Ravens wide receivers turn out to be what we, you and I used to talk about every year with the running backs? <laughs> it's the fourth guy that nobody ever wants. I know. <laughs> Who is the fourth guy? Is it Devin Duvernay again? Oh no, Duvernay might get cut. Oh, poor. This guy. is 
Yeah. That's, I don't even know if there's a fourth. The, the fourth actually might be Isaiah Likely. I guess that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Where, where the hell do I have these guys? Gabe Davis. Where the hell is he? Okay, there we are. That makes more sense. Apparently, I hadn't updated my uh, wide receiver rankings on the site. I, I do enjoy some Gabe Davis. And you, it's funny. For the guy that everyone wanted to draft last year, no one gives a shit about this guy anymore. <laughs> Thank you. This is, this is why I do the last year's trash article. Like, there's so much hype last year. Oh, he's going to catch 15 touchdowns, and he's the number two, and blah, blah, blah. And, I even got sucked up into it a little bit. I was the lowest one on him, and then I moved him up because I'm like, okay, maybe, like, am I being bullheaded? Let me move him up a little bit. And now nobody wants him. He's going, what, like wide receiver 45 or something? Would you rather have Michael Thomas or George Pickens? Hmm, Michael Thomas. I go back to what that, that Steelers. I love George Pickens. I think George Pickens is the best talent, but that wide receiver, that at least, I got to see a second preseason game for the Steelers. I don't know if that was just messing around to see what worked, but putting Allen Robinson on the field, and pulling off Pickens, and then pulling off Deontay, Je- like I don't know what the hell they were doing in the week one. So I, I for some reason I did. I guess my it didn't update when I tried to save it uh, because I had Michael Thomas at wide receiver number thirty one, and that makes him number seventy four overall in the rankings. Now that we've added in the tight ends and the quarterbacks. I can't envision any more tight ends actually cracking the top 150 at that point like they're all the same i think once you get down to evan ingram once you get outside of the top 10 it's all the same to me i would even say get some irv smith in your life (laughs) irv Irv smith's finally gonna stay healthy three years later it's what everybody wanted to have happen yeah and i wouldn't react too much to the dulcich stuff uh week one we'll see how that plays out through the rest of the preseason yeah, I was just, that's my point being knock him out of this tier because that's a, that's a legitimately at least a concern for right now. You're not buying into Sam Laporta either? No, the Laporta potty? No, thank you. <laughs> Laporta potty. I mean, he's on the same team as Hawkinson. Uh, what are we going to do here? No, he's not. Oh, yeah. You're, you're right. thinking, oh, <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was dumb. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I did it like five weeks ago. So oh, I'm just, with you. You just say it and it comes out and it's like, oh, yeah, that's not right. <laughs> Uh, no, I listen. I just I try to stay away from rookie tight ends. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Rookie tight ends rarely do, if anything. He is on the same team as Hawkinson. No, he's not. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, keep, I just keep looking at him in the stupid st- Lions jersey, like, and I'm like, like you can't. I know you can't get Hawkinson out of your mind as a Lions. I know, just and, something about it. Like Hawkinson was 87 on the Lions too, wasn't he? Or was he 88? Oh, I think he was 87. Was he? Because like, I see the picture and it's like Hawkinson's number. It just stares me in the face. Now I know how Cuss feels every time he says the Oakland Raiders instead of Las Vegas Raiders and the St. Louis Rams. Which well, I mean, he's which a, he still no, he was 88. You're right. Him. He was 88. Yeah. I know. It just looks like him. Yeah. It's a white dude who's big with eight <laughs> in front and a Lions jersey. It looks like Hawkinson. Just springs to my mind every single time. I think that's because everybody they tried to replace Hawkinson with just looked like Hawkinson. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, they, they have a type in Detroit at tight end. Dan Campbell loves them. Same looking tight ends. But no, like I don't. Could he be good? Yes. It would make sense to me. Hayden Hurst could be good. Like I said, Hunter Henry could just be good. Trey McBride could be really good, even with losers passing him the ball. So I don't see a big enough differentiation between any of these guys to make an actual case for them. Would be where I'm at. Mm. Yeah, I mean, help. Jake Ferguson could be the best out of all of them for the Cowboys. Like, there's just... And listen, look, Gerald Everett could be that guy for the Chargers. No, yeah, Gerald Everett last year was fun again this year. Yeah, and like... Joanna to... Man, your Jim... boy. Yeah, Joanna Man. Although now bad. they have Jimmy Graham's corpse back. They have Jimmy Graham back? I didn't even know that. You missed that? Yeah, I missed He actually that. played in week one, too. Good for he him. He played with the second team. Does he just, like, lumber yeah. down the field? He'll catch, like, eight touchdowns <laughs> this year. Watch. He'll be the fun fo- with Derek Carr... In New Orleans, he'll like end up being like the Foster Moreau of that team. Oh no, he'll be that one year of Richard Rodgers with the oh, Packers. God, like no. five hundred yards and eight touchdowns. Or, or Jimmy Graham on the Packers? Didn't that happen? And he caught a bunch no. of touchdowns and did nothing else. No, I don't think that happened. Or was it on the Bears? No. The Bears, but I don't think he did much there either. Now I remember playing him on DraftKings and betting him first touchdown. Maybe I didn't win those bets, and maybe I'm thinking that I won those bets. <laughs> Let's see. He lost here. you the money. <laughs> he was on Green. He back. was on Green Bay. He only had five touchdowns in his time in Green Bay. Yeah, but I'm saying he didn't do much. No, he didn't. But like he was just he didn't do much. But he'd be there and just like steal touchdowns from people. That's all he oh, does. Oh yeah. Yeah. He had yeah. he had eight touchdowns with the Bears two years ago. 
It wasn't that many. He had eight wow. touchdowns. I, on 50 I thought it was like catches. five or six. No, on fifty catches. <laughs> there you three, go. He had three touchdowns on fourteen catches last year, or two years ago, twenty twenty one. He didn't play <laughs> last year. He's gonna he's gonna ruin the touchdowns of everybody. He's gonna be the touchdown leader for the Saints. <laughs> There we go. That's how we can build this out. Anyway, my top 150 rankings are now available down in the description and on the DraftKings network. RunTheSims.com, completely free to run your own projections, customizable, make your own rankings. Or if you want to get the daily fantasy and betting tools that come with you know 10,000 simulations in under five seconds, do whatever you want for every slate you want, every site you want. Code Mayo will get that for you right now. So I highly recommend that you go do that. League Safe to store your money, the app, or LeagueSafe.com. Jake, what do you got coming out at The Athletic right now? Yeah, I just dropped, like I said, the six bold predictions, which have reasons behind them. I think they're pretty fun. They're like pretty bold, like not insane. I got another round table of sleepers for the staff. You know, my customizable projections are out there as well. You can have fun because it's only 50 cents a week right now over at The Athletic. And then, of course, the rankings and all the cheat sheet, like what else? Dynasty rankings were updated, all that stuff. All the same stuff you're doing over there is just if you think I'm smarter than you are, which I'm not. I mean, I, I am you. I mean, you are. That's why I have you on the show to talk about my no, stuff. We're equitable. We're, we're equitable. No we're one, both no pretty No one smart. thinks that, Jake. People are here to listen to you, not me. <laughs> I think they're just here to look at my t-shirts. Everyone knows this. And I mean, to look at my fancy shirts, too. I know. You, you always I, have, I, you, I you have the spectacular shirts, shirts, for sure. I was actually staring at it a little bit to see if I could see an image hidden in the shirt. Yeah, they're like, all... Remember those? Whatever yeah. happened to those things? What, 3D shirts? I think people just started doing too many drugs in a free No, 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 no. Those paintings where you, like, yeah, stood three, there and 3D, you stared at it. 3D paintings. It... Magic eyes. Is that all they were? I thought there was a word for them. Yeah, they're called, they were called magic eye paintings. Okay. And they just disappeared. At All in Kid on Twitter. At the PME on Twitter. Sub to the channel. Sub to the podcast. Smash the like and check out them rankings. All right. I'll be back with more fantasy football as the weeks go on till opening kickoff. So make sure that you are subscribed and turn those notifications on. You turn them on, okay? I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Experience. Experience.